Welcome to another Ranger Auto video. Today we're going to show you something that everybody who owns a car should be able to do and that is to check the uh, protection of your antifreeze. It is winter time or at least it's going to be here shortly and it's a good idea while the weather is still decent to get out there and make sure that you don't wake up to a bad day. To do this all you're going to need is one of these awesome little testers right here that you can buy at Walmart for like a buck or two and all you're going to do is you're going to take a sampling of your antifreeze either through the radiator cap if you have one or through the coolant recovery tank if that's how you run your vehicle depending on the manufacturer uh, most new cars don't have radiator caps anymore so what you end up with is you're going to have to go through the recovery tank and I had an excellent example of one of them, but I sold it. So we've got our two trucks, and then we've got our two Escorts, our 97 Escort. And then the new car in the back there, that's the uh, 2000 Escort. We're gonna start with the 89 Ranger. One thing you wanna do is check it when it's cool. That's for safety reasons, of course. You don't wanna open up this radiator cap and have fluid smashing you in your hand and burning you and causing a whole bunch of bad problems. So, go ahead and we'll open this up. You want to look at the color. This is brand new antifreeze. So, I know it's going to be good. Brand new antifreeze will always be a bright color. I'm not going to say specifically green because a lot of the different antifreezes out there they are uh, different colors for different makes and models so what we'll do here is we'll take a sampling and we'll check our gauge here and our gauge is reading that we're protected to negative 34 degrees Fahrenheit so that means that we're in good shape here so got that checked most antifreeze has water in it so that's why it looks the way it does if you are a conventional kind of person that you use a straight green then you're going to have to change your mixture a little bit but uh, that one says it's negative 34 degrees fahrenheit which means that if i was to park this truck in the middle of alaska and not drive it for a week i could get out there and start it up and drive it away without any fear of broken blocks or cracked heads or anything of that nature. So now we're on to our 01 Ranger. It has a radiator cap. Another thing too is you want to check your coolant tank too. You want to make sure that you have some coolant in there and this one's a little low so I'll have to come back and take care of that. Open up our cap. The truck's been sitting for a couple of days, so we know we're good here. Check your color. This one looks pretty good. I'll show you some kind of ugly antifreeze here in just a second. You just want to. You're not introducing air, so if you see air bubbles, you're not introducing air into the system. All you're doing is because you got to squeeze the bulb to get the fluid in, that's all you're doing. And then you fill your bulb up. So your gauge comes up and this truck is good to negative 34 degrees so we'll go ahead and we'll push our clamp back in and we'll get all of our coolant back down in here. Don't worry if it's a little low like that. That's what the recovery tank will do. It will uh, recharge your uh, coolant. You don't want it to get down below the, the top of the upper tank anyway. So, now I'm going to show you what nasty antifreeze looks like. Let's go to our 2000 Ford Escort. It's got 126,000 miles on it. And uh, everything's been factory except for what I've done to it. So, we'll open up our antifreeze here. You see that? You see that? That is nasty. That right there is sediment that is out of old antifreeze so what we'll do is we'll stick our tube in here 
you only want to stick it in far enough to get some antifreeze out of it. Otherwise, you end up making a mess everywhere. And let's take a look, see here. Let's see, where are we at on this one? You see how nasty and gross that is? That is what happens when you don't fluid flush your vehicle on a regular basis. You look like this. This vehicle, in order to make it right, is going to have to have the antifreeze drained completely out of it. It's going to have to have the radiator steam cleaned and then new antifreeze introduced into it because it's got so much dirt sediment in there I would not be the least bit surprised if somewhere there is a clog starting. So that's what you don't want. That's also a sign of too much water in your antifreeze. If you're one of those that takes the straight antifreeze and mixes it, you end up with that. If it's a 90-10 mix or if you've just done nothing but added water to it. So that car will probably end up having to have the antifreeze drained and brand new antifreeze, at least for the winter, introduced into it to prevent any kind of future problems. Here's our 97 Escort. I've driven this car, so we're going to kind of take this cap off nice and gently. I believe we'll be okay. Yes, we are fine. We're a little low. If you can see inside there, we are a little low. So I might have to uh, put some antifreeze in here. Another thing you want to do is check your cap. This cap looks like it should be replaced. So we'll definitely have to do that. Replacing a cap's easy. You just take it off and put a new one on. So let's go ahead and get our sampling out of this car. Notice it's got fairly new antifreeze in it, so we should be good there. And you can see this one's got slightly used antifreeze in it as well because of the color of the fluid. So we're just going to have to let it go. And it looks like we are good to about negative 7. You want to call that negative 7? Yep, we'll call it negative 7. So this one might need to be... Uh, worked on a little bit not too bad though of course you want to kind of be careful when you put the antifreeze back into the vehicle like I'm doing and that's all there is to it good range is depending on what your average low is for the area you live in if you live up north like in Canada or the northern half of the United States like around northern New York and Maine and all that where you get like 20 30 below you definitely want to go the maximum possible which is negative 45 on the gauge let me show you that right there if you live like where i do in indiana then you'd probably be good around negative seven between negative seven and negative 20 just to be on the safe side depending on what part of the state you live in but uh, other than that you are all set that is what you need to do Plus, it also tells you right here, 50% concentration recommended. That would get you to a negative 34 degrees. And so we've got 50-50 everywhere it showed negative 34 degrees. So if you have any questions or comments or anything you'd like me to go over, just let me know. Otherwise, be safe and we'll see you next time.